to the Everyday Board Game Podcast with your host, Daniel. And Daniel. Daniel. Bum, ba, 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 ba. We are on the final of our five episode series mm-hmm. of our top 100 games of all time. Objectively perfect in every way. Yeah. Definitely not our opinions. Like, we crunched the data. Yeah, we We did. went through the science. <laughs> and we figured out what is actually the top 100 games. Mm-hmm. Based on our likes. Uh, for me, since the last time we did this, I've had actually some moves uh, mm-hmm. from the top ten. I have six games that fell out of the top ten. Now, there is one game that didn't make the top ten, but is my largest riser out of everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Mine, uh, yeah, I have my largest riser, and I think it was all just a fluke last time. Mm-hmm. Which we'll go into that when we get there. But yeah. we're going to start at number 20 today. Um, there's not too much to go into it. We hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Of course, this is the episode to watch. Yeah. If anyone joins us on live, I know it's kind of early still, but, uh, give a shout out. We'd love to hear what your thoughts on the games, if you played any, and, uh, let's, let's, let's get, get going. It. All right. Number 20, we're going to start with our coin of doom. If it lands on heads, it's me, tails, it's him. Let's find out. All right. My number 20, starting off strong is new to the list. This is my second highest new to my list. Really? Hands down. And this was a card game, more or less, that I, when I bought, I thought it would be pretty good. Okay. Because I bought it for that reason, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, this was during one of our big trade-ins. Yeah. And when I got it, I brought it home, and I played it, and I was like, guys, okay, hold on. You need to try this. And I think you've tried it. Okay. Pretty good. It is about Inuit folk. Ah, Inuit the Snow Folk. Yes. That really kind of gave away the title, didn't it? Yeah. Anyway, no, Inuit the Snow Folk, is, this is an absolutely amazing game. Uh, the company, I, I think it's Board and Dice or something like that. Maybe Dice Hate Me. I forget what company published it, um, but the art on it is absolutely gorgeous. I was, drawn, oh, yeah. I was drawn to the cover alone, and I'm not normally that big of a deal on it. Yeah. But there's something about, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, Inuit Native American cultures that I absolutely, absolutely love. Mm-hmm. And this plays similar in a way to something like Coco Pelli, yeah. which is another Native American themed card game, but from our favorite designer. And <laughs> one of our favorites. This, this has not. Co- Coco Pelli did not hit my list. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's it was good, but this really stacked above. And what made it so good is very simple. You can. Take an action. You have a long board that lists off all the different actions you can do. But it's also a long board because you can stack cards above it or below it, mm-hmm. depending on what you're doing. So if you are an elder, for example, you can recruit people into your uh, village. Yeah. And so if you do that, then you're taking characters from the middle that you get to do that that you get to add to yours. The, now what you assign them will de- will decide on what you want them to do. If you want them to be more elders, if you want them to be um, you know, hunters or gatherers or whatever. If you want them to be seers and be able to see the future. If you want them to be warriors, you know, there's a bunch of different things you can do. Yeah. When you put them down, that means anytime you take those future actions, you can take them more and more and more. So, it's very simple. It does take a lot to get into. Yeah. But, oh my goodness, does it work well. The art is amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. If you can find one, I, I, I would get a copy for myself if I can ever find oh, one. Oh, yes, yeah. It's that good. Um, that one play that we did, because I've only ever played it once, I know that yes. much, it still I, made my 130. Yes, I only played it, I want to say I've played it about six or seven times, because I know when I played it, I kept wanting to play it, and yeah. that's not very common. Normally, I'll play a game, I'm like, cool, got off the shelf of shame, glad I did. Anyway, what's next? Exactly. This was one where I... That was the first one of last year where I was like, wow, yeah. okay, I want to... Like, guys, you got to try this. And then after you try it, I want to play it again because yeah. <laughs> it's still really, really good. So, yeah, it was 130 Coco Pelli that we compared it to. Uh-huh. Uh, it was ahead of Coco Pelli for me as well. Yep. Uh, Coco Pelli was 152. Yes. Oh, so not by much. Yeah. yeah. And so what's interesting I'll check what here, my Coco Pelli is, but I, I know this was number 20. Yeah, so my number 20 is a game that I've uh, had on the list before. This is actually a good rising game here. It is up 70 spots from number 90 to number 20. Um, It's a game I know you don't care much for. You're fine with it. But honestly, I would recommend you playing it instead of the full contingency that we've been doing. One to two players. This is where it really shines. 
Uh, it has a theme on it that you really could care less about, but I think it's a That's really a lot of themes. It, well, it's a really good game if you play with a smaller player count. And this is Marvel Champions. Yeah, I thought this was gonna be it. <laughs> yeah, I do. I'm good. Like for, I don't know. Go ahead. Honestly, Go ahead. I, I'm uh, not gonna yuck your I, I know. I, I, I know like you're it. not a big fan of it. You're like, it's fine. It what it does. Yeah. But you've played it at like three and four players. It really shines um, because the the turns are much quicker. It's like your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. Like all the bad stuff is going on. Okay, it's easy for you and me to talk about it. I know you're not a big fan of like superhero stuff, but it, it, yeah. it is very thematic. Uh, in fact, it's now higher on my list than Arkham Horror LCG, and it's just because it's it's much more snappier. So it's like, the bad guys do their thing, I do my thing. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Put myself in uh, Ultra Ego mode this way. They could just scheme instead of me right. having to take too much damage. Okay, now I can come back. Boom, boom, boom. It plays really, really quickly. It's a nice little card game. They, uh, in fact, they, I have a deck sitting right there that I need to put into my box, and that mm -hmm. is the Wolverine deck. And that's another reason why it did jump higher for me, is because they're now starting to go with my favorite Marvel characters, um, which is the X-Men stuff. So I really do enjoy it. So my number 20, Marvel Champions. All right, on to our number 19. Like I said, I'm not going to yuck your yum. I get why y'all like it. Mm -hmm. I just... But and, and I think a big part of it too is you're just not into the theme of it as well. Right. It's one of those things like like it's not as hard of a rule, but like the same thing as cat games. Mm -hmm. In order for me to like a cat game, it's gotta justify there's a reason for cats. And this does it better than most <laughs> cat games, I'll give it that. It's just I also really don't care about that theme at all. I mean, this is not even my and highest so, Marvel game. Oh, I believe that. <laughs> that is long past anything I have of Marvel. Anyway, m number nineteen, you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. I will be starting. My number 19 is a crossover. I Ooh. think it was on your last list when you called this we one. We have another crossover, huh? Yeah, uh, this right. would be number 15. This is where your count would be. Uh, so uh, I just won. Now that the rest is gravy. Yeah, so my number 19 is a caveman game. Paleo. Paleo. Of course, I, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't ranked last time because I hadn't played it yet. I, in fact, I think when we did this, I was trying to hunt down a copy because I really yes. wanted to play this one. Finally got it. Finally played it. I've played it a couple times. I have tried a different scenario because I played the main scenario twice and I played another scenario. I love this game. It's I, I, I do really enjoy... Uh, like card play or well, clever card play so mm -hmm. you're trying to do this the whole point of the game is you're working with your group to try to get five of the the wall painting up and you have different ways you got to do it but you kind of know what something's coming up and you're like okay i know something bad's coming off this card so i'm only going to draw maybe two of these cards yeah. <laughs> and so i love that little kind of push your luck aspect right. you're still talking with your group because you're like i need to use this to go here and do that thing mm -hmm. i love everything about this game i understand why it won the kinder spiel it is a brain burner you no. really have to think with this puzzle and work with your group as efficiently as possible or else it's gonna bite you in the butt but yeah no uh paleo everything you said last uh last week i agree it's such a phenomenal game cool my number 19 uh, dropped two spots from 17 last year, and that's because abstract strategies always really stay pretty true <coughs> in my list. Yeah. Just because, I mean, it's so easy to play them, it's so, easy, it's so quick and easy. Well, it's hard to get good at them, but it's yeah. easy to play them. I'm just trying to, to think learn. which one this one, because you already said Corridor, so. Yes. This is, this is in the, gig, uh, the GIF series. The GIF series. This is yeah. in the GIF series, good. Yeah, so I'm well, trying to think okay. what the, the is it the one that starts with Y? Yes. Okay, I can't. I don't know the Yinch. name. Yinch. Yinch. Okay. Yinch. Yeah, Yinch is the one where where you have the rings. You have uh, five rings on the board, and you can move one ring in a straight line as far as you want. Although you can't jump over other rings. However, right before you move them, you set a disc inside of your color, mm -hmm. and then when you move it along the line, it's like a hexagonal grid. Yeah. Um, any discs that it jumps over, they're like Othello pieces. Yeah. They have white on one side, black on the other. All of those that you cross, whether they're yours or your opponent's, flip over to the other side. Mm -hmm. If you get five in a row of your color, you remove those from the board, and then you remove one of your discs. It doesn't have to be the one that scored, but any one of your five. First one to three points wins. So the better you are, the harder it's going to hit you mm -hmm. because it's removing your discs, giving you fewer options. Yep. Which doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal, but 
when you've already scored two points, that's half of your discs that yeah. are gone, or half of your rings. So you have to consider that. And also when those things disappear, too, those five discs that you just scored, those are gone, too. Mm -hmm. So if your opponent was setting something up and you're able to just jump right through the middle of it and score that, then that's a whole big deal that yeah. they have to do. So finding a place where to, where to block them, finding ways to corner them in, finding the best jumps to do, finding the best ways to get that option where you can get those five in a row and they can't do a thing about it. That's what makes this game so amazing. Um, no random in it. Pure strategy. Brilliant pieces. Very simple to learn. Very fun to play. The Inch from the Gift series. I think, I might be wrong, but I think this is the highest Gift series on my list. I will double check. So Yes, it is. For me, I have played this once. You showed it yes. to me way back in the day. Uh, in fact, that's before I was starting to keep statistics. So, yeah. This is probably my favorite of all the abstract yes. strategy games that you showed me, except for one. Uh, it did, the one I liked didn't make my list, but it's Goblet. I really, really oh, yes. do enjoy Goblet a lot. <laughs> Which, ironically, is one of my least favorites. Like, <laughs> I mean, I like it a lot, actually. But out of all of like the, the wood ones that I have, which that yeah. falls in that line, because uh, Zhigamik did make a version of Goblet, um, I think. Although I know it's Blue Orange is the main publisher here. Yeah. Uh, it's good. I, I, no, right. I, I like Goblet. <laughs> Yinch, though, out of all the other ones that you show me, is probably my favorite. I'm, I suck at it. I got destroyed right. last time we played. Well, I mean, it's only a matter of a couple of plays and you'd be up there. Yeah, like, so. with, the, with the rest. My number 18, though, is a game that I have talked about quite a we bit. We haven't gone to 18 yet. Oh, we're 19? No, no. Yeah, because I started 19. Okay, going to my number 18. Sir. All right, here you go. Starting with you instead. Here, it's on Tails. Go for it. Okay, my number 18 is a game I've talked about uh, quite a bit before. Uh, I really do love it. Uh, it also has kind of a sequel where the actions you do in this game could be carried over to the new game. This one is, let's see, it's not my favorite Thunderworks game, but it's up there. This one's role player. I still thoroughly, and it's actually went up from 23 to 18. Nice. I really do enjoy role player a lot. I have all the expansions. I think you can see the big box set right there. Yep. Um, I have all the expansions. <coughs> all the expansions, most of the promos. In fact, I got most of the Th Thunderworks games, especially the Dawn of Ulos. You don't see cartographers there because it's in my bag behind me because I took it uh, game night on Saturday. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's such a great game. I love the fact that you're just... It, they made a game out of building an RPG character. <laughs> it really, it's a ridiculous theme. It's a ridiculous theme, but it was so much fun. Although... You know, that was what made it novel, but when it's like, now after you play role player, you can use that character in an RPG. No! Like, you made it not unique anymore. Well, I, I like that. I mean, it still is. I, I do like role player. Role I, player is fun. I think what, what, what really is fun about role player with that is, like, you can play it and then carry it over into role player adventures, but you don't have to. You could just score your points and have fun with it. Uh, because in role player adventures, they have pre-made stuff where you can use in the game without having it. But I just found it fun to carry. <laughs> such a ridiculous idea. The fact that they turned it into an actual game. But it, what's interesting is with role player adventures, it still feels like role player because you're still. It, it's all about your dice manipulation in that game as well. Yeah. But role player, it is is so fun. I like the fact that you have like your little backstory and you're trying to meet the the requirements there and you're trying to make sure you get your. Uh, stats properly align the proper colors in there and then you get gold if you use your character's color like if you you play the wizard you're the blue if you get blue dice in there you get gold for using your specific colors and you're trying to get your alignment into the proper area by using certain powers because you're going to get more points that way I just love sure. that it literally is a point salad game based on dice manipulation it is it's phenomenal I do enjoy this game a lot role cool. player alright my number 17. 18. 18. My number 18 was 27. Um, so it's climbed a little bit. And uh, this is also a half crossover. Because okay. you talked about the other game of this. It is the same game, just a different theme on it. Uh, have I talked about it today? No. Same game, different mm -hmm. theme. Yes. Do you know when I talked about it? No. 
but it's part of a trilogy, and it's the first in the trilogy about card manipulation. Oh, is it Century? But yep. it's the, the Century Spice Road. Road. The good ver- no. I'm I get that. That's it. That's not a half no. crossover. That's uh, a full crossover. All right, that's a crossover. We're sixteen. That's fine. But Century Spice Road. Now the reason I like it is him and I are both colorblind. But yours is a little more severe than myself, mm-hmm. and so the red and green that they have there. Yes, well, I do have I some trouble. I wouldn't say it's s- s- more severe than mine because I have no trouble with the the century gems where you have trouble. I with do them. have trouble with the century uh, but gems. The yes. cubes bother me more. Right, than, and that's why I go in with the century because that one I can see. Which is why I like dry euros. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm okay yeah. with dry dusty euros. Sometimes there's too many tans and grays. Oh, uh, well, that's when you get into the LA games. Yeah, exactly. But this one. The red and green, they're pretty vibrant, at least enough where I'm okay with it. Yeah. And those pieces, those are absolutely phenomenal. Um, actually, I bet they make some really, really nice upgrade bits for them. Oh, man, that would be nice to find some nice upgrade bits I bet, for this game. I, bet we find I mean, I don't need seats. it for the Golem edition, but for, like, Century? Yeah, I see, I don't like the gems that are in there. Like, there's plenty of games that have those gems, and I like it, but there's something about, like, those containers I didn't like that much. The gems, See, I like, like the containers more in Century that are uh, Gollum than I do in Spice Road. Uh, the Spice Road has the bowl. Yeah. And it's like a Moncala cup. You, makes you, it easy to pull the pieces out. That is nice. But you know what else is nice? I don't have to put my stuff in a baggie and worry about it That's going there. True. Mine has a lid for That's all true. <laughs> Well, if I keep my games horizontal, then it's not a problem. problem because yeah. the lid does like but flush here, against here, the thing. Here is a but problem. I don't. Here's, so. No, but here is also another problem with that. Even if I keep it horizontal, like on my shelf here, they're not going to be horizontal on my game bag. That's true. That's true. <laughs> when I'm taking it somewhere. But you know the number one reason why Century Spice Road is better than Golem Edition? The covers. No, the covers. Because the yeah. covers, you can do a panorama. Well, you could have done... You did that with the first two games. That's what annoys me, is like... Why, why if you did it with the Century, where you have all three covers in a panorama, you do it your Golem Edition, where the first two work yeah, together, and the third one is off on its own. It's like, come on! Yeah, it's like, why you gotta be doing that? Yeah, no, Century Spice Road, everything you <coughs> said about it, um, it, Century Golem is his version, mm-hmm. Spice Road is mine, they really are the same game. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, the uh, the card manipulation, the being able to buy cards for, for really inexpensive. Yeah. The, the way you maneuver everything to try or to get the right spices. if you really, really want a card, you have to pay for that yes, card, basically. Exactly. Yeah, and so it's like makes other cards enticing for other people. Yeah, because so. they get to take the cubes that are on it. Yeah. And so that that's just... You throw whatever cubes you need to at it, but that, yeah. that makes the card grow so valuable mm-hmm. at that point. It's a brilliant game. Um, I Very can't say more than nothing about it. simple engine builder, too. Yes. Yeah, this is my introduction into... into uh, like you know how like I I've always considered Dominion like to the, be the deck builder intro, introduction, yeah. and I still more or less do that. I will do um, uh, Hero Realms now. I, or, I I still think Summer Camp. Yeah, honestly, Summer Camp is good too. But like, if I want just pure deck building, I'll pick one of those two. But this is the version of that with engine building for me. Mm-hmm. Century Spice Road is like number one. Is like, do you want to know what engine building is? Let me show you how this works. Yeah. And as soon as it clicks to you... And once your stuff starts bam. firing, everybody yeah. just starts giggling. Yeah. <laughs> I and, do this and I do this. And, and it has <laughs> no reason to be as good as it is. Yeah. You're converting cubes into other cubes mm-hmm. at a slight benefit. There's really not, like, any technical excitement into it. But for some reason, it's so good. And you feel that tension. And mm-hmm. you feel that, like, oh, I'm doing this, which will do this, which will do this, which will do this. And that's not even one turn. That's multiple turns. But since they go by so fast, you're like, all right, I'll play this. All right, now think, of, oh, it's my turn again? Okay, um, all right, I'll buy this card. It's like, so now if I play this, oh, oh okay, all right, again, my yeah. turn again? Yeah. It's And it plays, like, five players so consistently. Quick. It works brilliant. Century Spice Road, my number 18. That's... Why? Yeah, no, I don't disagree with you. I uh, also say, uh, mentioning how you say this is your go-to engine builder. Yes. This is also my go-to engine builder, but there is another game that I'll also teach to people because it just induces a lot of giggles and it's got great components. It's Gizmos. Oh, yeah. Uh, I like Gizmos, too. Yeah, it's yeah. Already on my, it was already on my list, but yeah. I think these two, yep. like if there's something that you want to teach, like if someone saw Century Spice Road and they're like, uh, no, because, right. you know, it's not, it, it's a pretty game, but it's kind of dry, dusty Euro with the bits. Right, exactly. Then you could go, okay, here's Gizmos. Let's try Gizmos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Those great components, right. The great components on either one, really. Yeah. Metal coins help, you know. Yeah. All right, off to our number 17. Certainly. <coughs> My number 17 
is now uh, you. This is another crossover, I believe. This was my number twenty-one, so it jumped up because I remembered how much we enjoyed this experience. And uh, even though technically we can continue playing it, it wouldn't be the same. It would almost be worth playing it through the entire way again. This is the one that you talked about, I yeah. think, on our last episode, yeah. where there was some secretive piece that kept moving around <laughs> in places that people didn't want it. This is Betrayal Legacy. What's my number 40? Your number 40, last episode, top of the episode. Yep. Again, I'm not going to go too much into it. That's number 17 crossover. Betrayal Legacy, you and I were part of that same experience. I was the one who bought it. Yeah. And it is replayable afterwards. But honestly, I would just buy a whole new copy. Yeah, play it's it. worth it. Like, it's actually worth it. Yeah, you, the big surprises might not be there. But that was how many years ago for us? At, at least three or four. Uh, about 2018, 2019, something yeah. like that. I think we finished so, it in 2019. Yeah, so the four years ago. Yeah. So no, I don't was, remember everything, but I do remember some parts. <laughs> just because of the giggles. Yeah, yeah that, just because yeah. of the absurdity. To the point where we had a, one player that came and started joining us on that game mm -hmm. night where he he dropped in right when we hit a really big point and that was the perfect time <laughs> for him to actually you know yep. start joining us because it's like, yeah, that makes sense. You're just this whole new family that's joining yeah. us. And he only played half the game. He really enjoyed it. So Yeah, this, this is still battling as... This is my number two legacy game of all time. It might eventually come to be number one because it is replayable. Honestly, I think it was my highest legacy because I'm not seeing anything here. Yeah, let me look at your list. And I'll find. Uh, I do have a higher campaign game, but yeah. Well, I, think I was, knew that. Yeah, it was my highest legacy because the other one uh, dropped out of my top 100. Alrighty. Well, there you go. My number 17. Speaking of a drop, this dropped out of my top 10. Uh-oh. It was as high as number 2. Oh, no. And I think one of the reasons why it dropped out of my top 10, is, and it's not for lack of play, I still play this game, is because the sequel to it just didn't give me the same happiness or fun and giggle, giggliness, I guess you could say, that the first one did. And I still play the first one over the second one. Um, one is about monsters, and the other is about cryptids. This is Horrified. Yep. I still love Horrified. In fact, I own both versions way, way up there. You can't see it off the camera. Um, but I own both versions. I enjoy both versions, but I really prefer the Universal Monster movies over it. I've played both multiple times, different monsters and stuff like that. And The Cryptid one is fine. I understand why they went the Cryptid. Mm -hmm. It's much easier to expand that way because you went with like the North American Cryptids. Now you can go with the Europe Cryptids. You know, it's it's so much easier to do it that way because what can you do with Universal Monsters? The Blob? There, yeah, there's not right. really another monster on this. Yeah, the uh, Fog, maybe? maybe? Maybe, but I don't know if that's Universal. The Thing? I don't no. know if that's Universal either. No, I don't. No, I think Blob is the last one in the Universal line. Oh, okay. And so, uh, I guess you could do, like, The Raven, which was uh, okay. Bella Lugosi as well, who played Dracula in the Universal stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, I I just I still adore this game. It's still one of my go-to Halloween games, just to bust it out. I I me personally, I really like putting playing this game and putting on one of the Universal Monster movies in the background because it's just so campy and it goes with everything in there. I love that the fact that the art is all black and white. Yes, I, I really so campy, so beautiful. campy. I and I even like the fact that they put in um, what are their names? I, 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 Abbott and Costello yes. into the game, and it was funny when I was showing it to you the first time and I was like and this is Abbott and Costello and you're like really? and I'm like yeah because they did a whole series of Abbott and Costello meets the Universal Monsters mm -hmm. I own like two or three of them digitally I own the mummy uh, when they meet the wolfman and when they meet Frankenstein mummy one is probably my favorite though the Abbott and Costello stuff yeah. But, uh, again, I love it when they match a really good theme with a really good game and Universal Monsters just hit song and I think the reason why it dropped again is because there was problems with the, the printing run of the cryptid one. Um, and it just it didn't feel as much fun. Now it just felt like, okay, yeah, I'm going to take this and go to this and do this. Yeah. So, uh, and I honestly, I think it's because Prospero Hall did uh, the original Horrified. And then the Robinsberger had a different team do the... the I believe it was one person, actually. Yeah, well, yeah, a different person just to do the other one. And it, it feels different, in a yeah. sense. So, But I do enjoy it. My number 17, Horrified. Cool. 16, here we go. To me, 
My number 16 is another one that climbed. And it's not the largest climb, though it was close. Uh, this originally, the base game of this was 196 last time we did this. Which, for me, it was a fine game. But because I got the newest feature of it with a bunch of expansions with it, and I played it a lot more because of that, it really sung and really went high. This is my highest Marvel game. Marvel United, especially X-Men United. That specifically is the reason why. One, again, I said earlier, X-Men's like my favorite of the superhero stuff. In Marvel, anyways. Wait, that wasn't right. Yeah. This one's right here. Oh, it's up there. I probably got playing that now. There it is. <laughs> All right here. Yeah, so it is It is a phenomenal, <laughs> easy, not difficult uh, co-op game. It becomes more difficult. Like, if you're just playing the base game, mm-hmm. it's super simple. Very easy. You have these guys. You beat up these guys. Done. When you get into all the expansion stuff, that's when it becomes more crunchy, more um, exciting when you're playing these games. Okay. Uh, I really did have a blast. And in fact, I just recently uh, played this with my other game group the other day. So, like, I just really want to play this again. Busted it out. Had fun with it. I barely beat... Um, who did we face? Red Skull. No, it wasn't Red Skull, because uh, I only have the Red Skull in the original Marvel base, but it was an X-Men one. Um, it was Mojo, uh, Mojo. Based, uh, based on the the series where they're in space, and they're, he's like got the game show and stuff like that. Yeah, it, in fact, they just released that same character for Marvel's Champions for the Mojoverse, and it is it's fun. It was fun. It was difficult, because what his what Mojo does is that you can't attack him. Uh, so he stays in one spot, and you have to clear out everything before you can start attacking him. But if his ratings go up, the damage to him deducts. So if you did three damage to him, and he's at a certain high rating, you'd lose two damage. So you only actually did one damage to him. So I love the fact that you can ramp up the difficulty by based on some of the characters you're playing against. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like that you can ramp it down to make it easier if you're playing with children. I love the fact that it encompasses that for everybody. So my number 16, Marvel United X-Men. Would you consider that a family weight? Oh, yeah, it's a family weight game. A family weight co-op? A, a family weight co-op, because basically you're just playing a card and you're getting tokens, and you're using the tokens to fight okay. or save things. Well, speaking of family weight co-op, my number 16 is also one, but it is jumped up from 32 last time, and uh, I haven't gotten anything new for this game since our last time we were doing the list, but I we did find out that they were working on a new expansion, their fourth expansion, and you got to meet the designer of this at Gamma and find out how truly amazing this guy was. Ah, uh, Castle Panic. Castle Panic. Speaking of which, I just got a copy of the new Castle Panic. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you just buy it? Uh, it was a, a gift from a buddy of ours that has been he's been holding really? on to because he keeps forgetting to bring them. Oh, wow. Okay. So you have the, the new second the, edition? The new right? second edition, yep. Wow. Yeah. you have to show me that sometime. Yeah, I it's, want to see the it's, art. it's literally up front. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> well, you know, pause the episode. Hold on. Let's go. Yeah. I, I, I just right, got yeah. it today because I had to go pick up my, my other game that okay. he's been holding. So Fair enough. Yeah, I need to ask him about that but it's so good yeah it's so good I, it's really I agree good. with Castle thing. Panic is awesome like it's so okay I have trouble saying it's good it's it's a good game mm-hmm. but what makes it so fun because even sometimes you're beholden to just what comes out oh yeah is it's very lucky I'm... It, it's lucky but for some reason it never feels impossible overwhelming it never feels... Well, no, there's times where it'll feel overwhelming. But there is, like... Uh, just recently, I was showing this off to a group a couple weeks ago. Okay. And they were playing it... Or no, I was playing it with them, actually. And we ended up drawing, I want to say, seven monster tokens in one turn. Oh, Just geez. because of the way everything was comboing. Oh, man. Which is not the most I've seen. I showed this once to a group of six... And they pulled nine in one turn. Jesus. On their second turn. Did you shuffle everything? Yeah, no. Yes, maybe. Yes, I don't remember. That was touched, a while ago. You, you touched everything. Yeah, and since I was playing, you know, it was brutal. But we were able to almost come back. It was a game over, but not because... Like, even though that was so terrible, we were able to fend off most of it. We were hurting, mm-hmm. but it wasn't until much later in a Raya, 
um, giant boulder ended up no knocking it out that we we're like, oh, bummer, okay. Um, oh no, actually it was a monster that was in a quadrant, we were about to take care of it, and then it moved one, because we just drew that token. Okay. So, no, it's an awesome game. Um, it's a tower defense game, you have a series of monsters around the board, they slowly start creeping inward, you're using your cards to try and beat them up, trying to get them away. Um, again, it doesn't sound like it should be that good, it sounds like it's too random, it works really well. It's super light, super fun, just about anybody could play, and it can play a group up to six, and mm -hmm. actually do it well. Well, yeah. Which is, it plays just as good at two as it does six. And honestly, the second edition, what I really like about it mm -hmm. is they went and made it more colorblind friendly. Yes, very much so. Because I had trouble seeing the two sectors because there was a red and green sector. Yes. I had trouble with that. Now that I can, uh, looking at the board when we saw him at Gamma, I was like, I can see those sectors. Yep. And, he, and he even talked to us like, yeah, he he really went to try to make it as colorblind friendly yep. as possible for mm -hmm. as many people can play it. Yeah. By the way, we're talking about friend of the podcast, Justin DeWitt. Yeah, great yeah. person. Anything Fireside Games makes, you, you have a good bet that they're awesome. Oh, uh, yeah. So, anyway, my number 16, Castle Panic. All right, moving to number 15. Number 15. Starting with me. That's right. Hey, speaking of that game I had to go pick up, and speaking of the game with the largest climb in my top 100, this was originally ranked 222. And it's now top 15. That is bigger than any climb that I've had. <laughs> and it's just because, one, when it was originally ranked, I've only played it one time. I enjoyed it when we played it, but I only played it one time. And then when we did one of our big old trade-offs, I think this was last year when we were doing Tucson Comic Con. Yep. Uh, I found a copy of this for myself and bought it, and it's just been played because it's a very simple, quick game. In 20 minutes, you can play a full game. This one is a trick-taking game. Where you don't want to take any tricks. This one is Little Devils. Yep. This actually, I almost <laughs> convinced my mom to play this just the other night. Nice. Almost. It, almost. It, almost. Now, it, She's it, very it, resilient about playing games. It, the thing about this one is, it, one, it's simple. It, all it is is like, all you want to uh, do is not try to uh, get Little Devil. So you're yeah. trying to finagle. Okay, if you play, I have the 35, which has a 5 Devil. I get to set what if it's higher or lower mm -hmm. my wife played the 36 before me sweet play the 35 i'm not taking that one <laughs> yeah and so someone stuck with a card with five devils on it and uh it's the lowest score wins so what happens when what you score it until someone hits 100 and then whoever has the lowest score wins the game and so you just keep playing that you go through the the, the deck it has a certain amount of cards that you play for player count and so, like, in a four-player game, you play 36 cards. So you you have open information if you're just paying attention to what's being played. Mm -hmm. It's like, I know one of these two have the 15, which has other five devils on it. So uh, it's a blast. Uh, and everybody I showed it to, even our friend who's not a big fan of trick-taking games, likes yeah, this game. Yeah, even like this one. And, and so I This adore was his this first trick-taking game that I think he liked. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> to the point where when we decide we want to play trick-taking games, we usually do it when a, a week he can't, doesn't come. Oh. <laughs> and so this one is Little Devils. Cool. My number 15, you already talked about. Mark down another crossover because you literally just talked about it on this list. It's another cooperative game. That is horrified. So we're at 17. I, I'm getting tired of just saying everything he said, but <laughs> yeah, everything he said. <laughs> I'm at number 14. I don't have anything to add to... Well, I know that. this one won't be on your list. Nope, probably not. And, what? I mean, I don't think it was... All right, I'll sign this off. Number 14 is the last one, the latest one that is new to my list. That's right, brand new, straight to number 14. This is a designer I've liked his games quite a bit in the years past, and but he tends to make pretty simple, uh, pretty streamlined, straightforward games. But when I found out that he came out with a deck builder ish, engine builder, tower defense cooperative game with amazing components, deck builder, tower defense. And this is one of the few from this designer that you actually like. Oh, yes. Yeah, Seeds of Rune Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I bought this on a whim, too. So <laughs> I was like, man, it's kind of expensive. We have it for sale at the shop. It looks okay. It's a designer I really like. So maybe Kinesia can pull it off. And I bought it, played it, and holy cow. It is good. 
Uh, that was not, not a fluke. Not the best Kenitsia game, but it's <laughs> Not good. the best Kenitsia game. Well, it might be the highest on my list, but I love it. Mili Fiori was mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I know you like Mili Fiori, but again, like he's been hitting it lately. Like, like the last two games I played of his were really good. Yeah. And that's and then, something, because I played some of his older games, and it's kind of like, meh. Yeah, I know. I, I get why people like him, but meh. Like, Raw, all right, I can play a better game of it. We'll play like a this. bigger game of yeah. it one day. Yeah. Um, but, like, Lost Cities, you hate. Oh, I can't stand Lost Cities. Keltis, you don't like. But, like, Well, this. Keltis is basically, Lost Cities, the board game. I don't like that. But also, at, at the same time, think Lost Cities, right? <laughs> think Millie Fiori, mm-hmm. and think Siege of Rundar. None of those are similar! <laughs> They're Millie, totally different. Millie Fiori is closer to Lost Cities than Siege of Rundar to the rest of his library. <laughs> yeah, technically. Yeah, no, Siege of Rune. The fact that he came out with Caesar Rundar and Millie Fiori so close, close yeah. it blows my mind. And like I said, I would not be surprised if Millie Fiori gets nominated for the Spiel next year. I, I really I would believe see, that. It, if it's so quick. It's so quick. It works well. It's satisfying to play. But Siege of Rundar, it's, it might even be nominated for the Kenner Spiel. I can because, see that, yeah. Because, yeah, definitely. The way it works is real simple. You have 12 cards in your hand. Two of those are bad. Um, or in your deck, sorry. Um, if you get new weapons, if you're able to get the resources needed to get those weapons, mm-hmm. you add it in, but you replace it with one of your other ones, so you're always going to have 12. Mm-hmm. The beginning of every two turns, shuffle up your deck, put two uh, sight unseen in your discard pile. They might be the bad ones, but really very likely they're not. Yeah, they're, they're probably, probably your good one that you just They're probably bought. your good one you just bought, which is a shame. But the good thing is when you replace it with a good one, you get it straight into your hand. So you get five cards to play, boom, 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 up to five, of course. Mm-hmm. Um... You're just trying to go around, keep the people from getting to the middle because they steal your gold. Too much gold gets stolen, you lose the game. You're trying to dig out through a tunnel on one side of the map, trying to get your way out of there before all of your gold is finished. But also, before all of your areas have been hit with catapults, or also before the monster deck runs out, which is the most common way. Mm -hmm. Sustaining that, keeping the enemies away from the gold, that's very doable, but with enough time is not very doable. Or also, you got to be careful because of the freaking cannons are coming up. Yes. Or the trolls. Yeah, or... the siege towers. Yeah, the, the siege trolls, towers. The goblins that pop up every time you break down a, a wall. What, what's really interesting yeah. about it is that we really do enjoy this game. And this is actually one of the luckiest Reiner Kanitsia games. <laughs> yes, you're beholden to dice rolls when you're fighting. Yes. And so, like, when I was I was trying to be the archer... And with I had dice all, rolling combat. We yeah. freaking like a Reiner Knizia game with dice rolling combat. combat. What's funny is, like, when I was the archer, I'd roll the dice, not hit anything. My buddy, who was the, the, the fighter, yes. would roll dice and hit all bows. Yeah. And so our other buddy finally was like, you know what? Screw you guys. And he started killing everything around. Yeah, he's like, you guys are doing terrible. Start digging up resources. <laughs> I'm going to go murder death everybody. <laughs> and he would. It was but so fun. It was so thematic. It was good. Really it was good. shenanigans. We played a four-player game of this. Yes. And it didn't take too long. We were like, wait. Yeah, what, it's what about we... two hours or so. Yeah, it did give or take. It, that was a learning game, too, honestly. Yeah. It, so much so that one of our buddies went out and bought that game because yes. he enjoyed it so much. Which one did bought it? Was that uh, Game Head Geek. Oh, Game Head Geek. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He played it on his uh, TikTok live stream. I didn't realize he bought it. Yeah. That's awesome. So my number 14... I know for a fact is not on your list because one, you don't own it, and that was one of your rules, and two, you it's just garbage. Barely right. played it. No, you don't. No, it's <laughs> no, it's not garbage. You actually enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, Try this me. is an I'll upgrade for another it. game that you used to have. With um, speaking of horrified, this also has a horror theme on it, and it's solo only. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> was it? You ranked, got me. Was it ranked? Is now my 14 because honestly I didn't play it yet. Yeah. Uh, but I this is my favorite solo game. I, love I would not have time. realized that it would gone up this high. Yeah, no, I I yeah. uh, to the fact one time I was playing it, I was playing the uh, the poltergeist one again. Mm-hmm. I had poltergeist in the background. <laughs> That's awesome. Just because I really enjoy this That's game. That's such a fun thing to do, just play that while watching the movies. Yeah, what what a, a good... the legally distinct different ones. Of course, of course. So, of like, course. uh, I was actually, the first time I played Final Girl, and it's, like, right behind your head, mm-hmm. um, I was watching Friday the 13th while playing uh, the Hans one. Oh, 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 there it is. I have both uh, seasons now, so I really want to dig into the second season. I really want to finish more of the first season. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, I'm not going to belabor the fact. It, there's a reason why it's so highly ranked right now, and it's considered one of the best. And, yep. In fact, it is the most successful solo game on Kickstarter. 
And now back to our number 13. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Starting Off to me. So my number 13 last time was number yeah, 31. So the note did just, just flip. That's all I did. <laughs> uh, but this, this is almost like... It's a resource management game. Um, but in a way, this is almost like... I guess it's a ratchet mechanism, but you have two of them going at once. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful components and art. In fact, it actually has one of my favorite themes, which has been really common lately. It's been nature, specifically about the national parks. Uh, uh, this one's Parks? Parks. That's okay. right. From Keymaster Games, Parks. Simply. Parks. Parks. Well, I was trying to think, is like, I don't think you like trails as much as Parks. Uh, no, I don't like trails as much. I do like trails quite a bit, but yeah. it did not rank on my top 100. No, Parks is bar none. I like it better. It's yeah. a little bit longer, but that's the only detriment to it. Okay. Better components, better uh, better mechanisms, funner things to do. I love the idea of, like, you can move one piece as far as you want, but it can't land on another, on another player's spot unless... You have that you special. Have the, the special, in which case you can, but then you're trying to get to certain spots in order mm -hmm. to trade in the resources to buy the Parks. Some of those parks uh, are easier to get than others, but they're also worthless points. Gorgeous artwork on it. Did I mention gorgeous art? Because these, oh, the is, art on this it is pretty. And it's funny. It's just uh, beautiful. Speaking of which, I've been following, I don't know if they were like on the Dice Tower group or the Board Game Revolution group, but there was a, a couple that was going around to the national parks trying to yes. recreate those photos. Yes, and they were actually taking pictures <laughs> at the national parks of where it was taken, yeah. which I think is absolutely that was, yeah, stellar. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. So whoever you are on the Board Game Revolution group, like, check that out. That's brilliant. Yeah, like, no, that's that really cool. You guys are doing an awesome job on that. But yeah, my number 13, I don't want to belabor it too much, because, yeah, I mean, if, watch a how-to-play video on it. If you know what you like, yeah. you're going to know if you like that right away. If, and if you think I, you'll like it, you'll really like it. I, I, I honestly always say, it's like, yeah, watch a video, but if you have a chance to go to, like, an FLGS yes. and they have a demo copy, just try it out. Yeah, try um, it out. It is, it is I don't think you'll game. be disappointed. Yeah, it's really, really good. Um, it. I don't, yeah, I don't think it made my list. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've actually looked at this. So, yeah, I'll yeah, look it up later. That. But yeah. uh, my number 13 is actually a very heavy game. To the point when you actually played this, uh, a group of us played it, we couldn't finish it. We just had to finish the age because everybody had to go home. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I do like this one a lot. If you want to talk about a civilization game, this is your go-to. I had this one in Nations. I liked this one so much, I sold Nations. Oh, wow. Uh, this is Through the Ages. Yeah. I really, really enjoy this game. Uh, I love everything about it. I love the little tongue-in-cheek aspects. Like one of the leader cards is Sid Meier, yeah, for uh, who made the Civilization uh, video games. What and, a good homage! Right? Yeah, a nice little homage. And what I like about it too is they actually said uh, through the ages they when the I think I forget who it is. I think it's Vladimir Chavato mm -hmm. uh, said he was trying to do a. Um, civilization board game based off the video game because he really enjoyed it so i'm like yeah, yeah this hits uh, rings really well um i love the fact that you could pull different cards that give you diff different types of government types but then you can also lead in war you can colonize other land like islands and stuff like that or you can go to war with your neighbor or there's like bad stuff that's ha happening in events so right. you're trying to like i know i see it in then in there so make sure my population is higher than everybody else is. Just in case. Just in case, because I know the rats are For coming For totally out. no reason, right? Yeah, no, to make someone have negative points. <laughs> That's why you want to make sure your civilization is up at a certain point. This way it's like, okay, I have the highest civilization. You guys are the ones that are dying to the plague over here. <laughs> uh, I, I really do enjoy this game. Uh, it has a really great app integration, too. So if you just kind of want to try it without having to play the big board game. And to the fact... The expansion to this game came out on the app first before it got uh, printed uh, for the board game. Oh, for the okay. simple reason, that it was around 2020 when the the, the actual um, uh, expansion came out. Oh, so yeah. there was a whole printing process or thing, and they couldn't get it into the stores yet. But I do own the expansion. I do love this game. Uh, that's the reason why it climbed from 6 to 13, just with extra gameplays, because... I remember when it came up in the pub, people were like, yeah, I'd play that again. If I had the time, the three, four hours that you have to put into this game, yes. depending on the player count, 
Just of course. basically make it an hour per player. That's pretty much what you're going to have to do. Yep. But it's so good. I really do enjoy this game. Cool. Very cool. Off to number 12. Yep. My number 12 fell 10 spots from number 2. It's not as bad as my number 2. It dropped 15. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this is number 2. And the reason it dropped 10 spots is very simple. You cannot continue playing it after you're done. Mm, Pandemic Legacy Season, season one. 1. This is my highest ranked Legacy game. At that time, when we finished that first season, this was a contender to unseat my favorite game of all time. Yeah. And I strongly, strongly considered it at the time. Because I was like, man, I really enjoyed it. And the only reason, and I repeat, the only reason it didn't is because once we were done... You couldn't keep playing it. Yep. That's the only reason it didn't unseat my number one. And so, so Pandemic Legacy was my number 11 last time we did this. Yep. It's uh, one of those that dropped. It dropped to 136. And again, it's for that reason. It's like, yep. once you're done, you're done. It doesn't get played anymore. Exactly. And you haven't finished the season the second three one, yet. Yeah, yeah. Or se- season two. I haven't played oh, that okay. one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, See, I, I had played all three, so I kind of lumped them together. Mm-hmm. And and I season one is still my favorite of the three. So far, from what I've played of Season 2, it is my favorite out of the two that I've played so far. I don't know. Right. I really do enjoy that twist in the first one, and I don't know if I'm going to get that kind of experience, because I'm kind of expecting something like that. So it's like, yeah, I get it. I don't remember. So I don't remember. My number 12 also fell out of my top 10. It went Ooh. from number 4 to number 12. And again, it's just because so it's I, garbage now. I played the mess out of it and haven't played it too much since. In fact, it was one of those games that actually got me through the pandemic because uh, we could actually play this with uh, friends over Zoom. Uh, it's a very simple party game. I already know what this is. Wow! Yeah. Like, like I said, okay. it's just because it hasn't been played all that yeah. often. I mean, it's in drop a lot, but yeah. still, it's yeah. like it's not even in the top ten anymore. No. I, that does surprise me. Uh, this one is just one. Uh, just it's one. a it's a nice little simple party game. Every time I mention this, he does this and throws me off every time. Oh no! Continue. Sorry. No, stop doing <laughs> that. Every time. You would think. I would stop doing it after. No, I'm done. Uh, go on. We're moving to our 11s. No, 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 just one is amazing. It's no, one of the no. best party games of all time. I'll finish this for you. No, you're, you're right. No, just one is really good. You never let me get my points out. <laughs> you had more than one point? <laughs> yes. I'm so sorry. No, right, no, 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 we're done. Uh, we're, so we're, we're not, gonna, we're, we're not even going to finish this. You're going home now. I'll oh, this, finish this. This is of- a crossover. This is my number 84. Yeah, I know it's a crossover. This is 18. All right. Good choice. No, no, no. Number 11? No. No, we're done? No. We're done? No. Number 11, 1 through 11 will just not be heard by the audience anymore. Yeah, no, no. Because you can never let me get through a point. Okay, no, I apologize. Go on. Moving on to our 11. What's the coin? Oh, I thought we were done. Making that list now your number. <laughs> number 11. <laughs> I'll be starting. I don't even know what my <laughs> number 11 is. I'm so sorry. Um, my number 11 dropped from number 5. And this is the first time that it has ever dropped out of my top 10. This is one of my favorite card games of all time. I feel like you're staring daggers through the screen, reflecting back. I see your face right here on the on the recap screen. I apologize, sir. This is one of the best deck builders of all time. And I say one of the best the best this is my personal favorite deck builder i believe i'll double check that but uh yeah this has 15 expansions now some people don't like that there's not much theme i think there's actually more theme than most people give it credit for especially with some of the expansions they're absolutely hilarious this is dominion if you haven't gotten a chance to play it this was the first the very first card game only card game that i bought for more than like 40 bucks or something i think it was 45 retail at the time and i was genuinely nervous because i was getting into the hobby and I was like, okay, I just spent my, I just bought my first fifty dollar game, which was Ticket to Ride, and now I have this game. It's like I've heard really good things, I'm really on the fence because it's only cards for forty five bucks. Bought it, fell in love with it. Since then, I have bought every Dominion expansion. I couldn't be more happy about it. It's my number eleven Dominion. Off to you. My number eleven. It's a game you haven't played, and thank God for that, because you probably ruined this pick. <laughs> 
Uh, it's what I mentioned already. Uh, I, its predecessor was my number 18. This is the one where you can create that character and move it into a campaign style game. This one is Role Player Adventures. I do really, really enjoy this one. Um, it's been a blast from what I've played of it. Um, um, I've been playing it with our other group. There's another uh, game on this list that I'll be talking about later that I'm also playing through campaign-wise with them. But yeah, Role Player Adventures, it's really fun. You have to make decisions as a group. You're using dice that you roll to help you, you know, modify, uh, or not modify, like open some stuff up for you. Or, you know, you can't fight that thing, so you got to take some damage. It's just, it's it's very well done for dice placement campaign game, in a sense. Uh, I really do enjoy it a lot. And I also, like I said, I like the fact that you can carry your role player characters. I, I left it over at their house. Oh, okay. Um, I like the fact that you can take your role player characters uh, into it. Like, you create it as like, okay, I did really well with this game. I want to see what he does in this game. And so that's what you do. Did you bring your uh, role player game too with it? To so yeah, before when I got right, role cool. player adventures, I took role player like a couple weeks before we were going to start role player adventure. This way we can start our, our get our characters done, uh -huh. and then we take those characters and you plug in the numbers. And the, they actually say when you're bringing a character over, the rule yeah. book actually tells you, okay, this is what you have. This is where you plug it, and it just tells you how many dice you get to roll of certain things. So uh, I do really enjoy it. I like the the plug and play capability of it. Cool. All right, off to number 10. We're finally in the top 10. Yeah. <laughs> Might have a new podcast partner for year five. You know, I was thinking about it. It's like, how many characters do you make? I thought about it, and I was really holding myself back until you made that remark. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell you the joke, because it was pretty good. All right, number 10. Here we go. Starting with me. I'll admit, that was probably karma. <laughs> you deserve it. Starting with me, my number 10 is a game that climbed from number 15 to now number 10. And I, again, it's one of the things because it's a very prolific game. And this is the one that we kind of disagree a lot of times because it always gets compared with another game. Um, you like that other version more than this one. However, you did finally buy yourself a set for this se series of games. Yep. This okay. <laughs> this is unmatched. I still hold true to that. I, I prefer Funkoverse. But the the Houdini Genie was pretty darn fun. <laughs> did you play it? Yes. <laughs> what do you think? With Jim. He was Genie. <laughs> the Genie yeah. is really genie crazy. Genie was mean. <laughs> the Three Wishes cards. Those, those were <laughs> brutal. <laughs> Well, it's funny because uh, when I played the genie, we were playing teams, like uh -huh. two versus two, and my very first card was a three wish yeah. that forced them to discard cards oh, yeah. at the very beginning. Yep. And because of that, it actually helped us at the end of the game because they didn't have enough cards to fight me at yep. the end. So I really did like that set. I love most of the sets on here. Um, we did play... I, I've really enjoyed the Marvel sets, honestly. Because some of the Marvel characters do really cool stuff. Bullseye in the Hell's Kitchen set, mm -hmm. he doesn't matter about line of sight stuff. Yeah. If you're five spaces away, he can hit you. I was like, that is amazing. That's, that's he awesome seems like really overpowered. But then you have Daredevil coming in, popping everybody, healing himself, and then running away. Yep. Uh, me and we were playing a three player game of that, and we were and our, our mutual friend Dom was playing Daredevil. He only has 17 health. I think we had to do like 27 damage to take him out yeah. because he just kept popping away and healing himself. It's like he healed himself like 10 different times. It was ridiculous, though. It was it was su it's such a good game. I, I love everything about it. And they just announced that they're going to do a co-op version of yep. this game. And I'm it like, does sound pretty cool. It does sound really cool, especially since you can fight Mothman. My only gripe about that is. You can't use the villains in uh, player uh, unmatched because I would have loved to have done Bigfoot versus Mothman. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been great. I really would have. But yeah, my number 10 unmatched. Cool. My number 10 fell from number 6. Not too bad. Not Start too bad. The top 10. But this is one of my all time favorite two player games. It's Card and Tokens. Two player, huh? Mm hmm. It's two player only. It's not the Stefan Feld one, right? No, it's not. Okay. I, I don't know, because it's not Daxu. I know that. It's not Daxu, <laughs> no. But it is based in India. Based in India? Uh-huh. 
In fact, it has one of the best app implementations I've ever played of any game. Oh, Jaipur. Jaipur, yes. Jaipur, that was one of the first games I've ever played on Board Game Arena. And I used to play with my brother over the internet. Yeah. And I absolutely adore this game. Uh, what my favorite part is, is that it's a head-to-head game, mm -hmm. but you never directly do anything to your opponent. You're only working with the market that's in the middle. Now, everything you do to the market directly affects, affects them, your opponent, yeah. but you're not doing anything to them. So there's no blame. Oh, there's all blame. Yeah. I mean, you can blame all you want, but really, it's like all I did was just get some, get you know, a couple camels or get some gold pieces because I needed them. Uh -huh. Whereas uh -huh. you're trying to get the most money in this game. And the way you do it is by selling things um, either in bulk and you get bonus tokens or by selling them first when the demand is high because there's a bunch of tokens in a row. They, they diminish value as you buy them. So like leather, that's the most common one. The first one you buy is worth three po or four points, then three, then two. Then there's a whole bunch of ones. But if you're able to sell five tokens at a time, you have up to, a potential of up to ten bonus points when you pull the token. Mm -hmm. Camels are really cool at manipulating it. Camels just sit out in front of you. They don't count towards your hands, but you can use them to, for trading. Or you could just simply take a card, do two trades, or sell, get the tokens that are associated with it. Yep. Best of three rounds. Each of the hand works really well. It's still one of my favorite like head-to-head, non-abstract like, strategy games. I think it is my number one two-player only board game that is not an abstract strategy. Yes. I don't have any two-player games in my top ten. Yeah, and I know you're not a big fan of two-player games, but I, I really, uh, really enjoy it. I like two-player games that just don't get played at the house. Right. So, it just... I just like, played another two-player game the other day, a brand new one. I just us, had so. to turn in my... Um, uh, where I traded in my Seven Wonders Duel, because... It's been sitting on my shelf for yep. years and just doesn't get played. So yeah, you're either gonna play by yourself or play in a group. Yeah, yep. yeah, and, and so like, uh, there's a few games that my wife will just play with just the two two of us. Yeah, one of them being Gloomhaven, but the others is it's just like they won't get played. She yeah. likes. Yeah, she doesn't Wonder seem Duel. like she likes more of the, like the head to head like two player only games. She's yeah. just like she likes Gloomhaven because Gloomhaven is awesome. I think that's what it really is. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, my number 10, Jaipur, still in my top 10 for a reason, shall we? Yeah, so moving to our number 9s. Number 9. So Jaipur went from 6 to 10, right? Yes. Who's starting this one? I didn't see That'll that be yours. Okay. Mine dropped 4 points, too. went from 5 oh. to 9, still in the top 10, and it, uh, this one, again, is lack of play. Yep. I have everything for this game, including I'm getting the big box sometime soon, I don't know. With the whole fun again situation, I don't know who if they're going to still use fun again just to, because they're contracted to, or if they're going to get someone else to deliver. But this one is probably the best Western game I've ever played. Who like the hotel? The best Western. Oh God! I'm sorry. That's what you said. I'm just making sure. The this best is... Western. Oh, sorry. Uh, every time. <laughs> every time. So this one is it was a softball. I'm so sorry. This one's Western Legends. It's a very, uh, it's an open world game that you basically decide whatever you want to do. You can play poker. You can play. Uh, you can be an outlaw and rustle cattle, or you can be a sheriff to go after outlaws. Whatever you want to do, it gives you the most points as possible for you. Uh, I enjoy enjoy it so so much. Um, like I said, the only reason it dropped is because it hasn't get played much. So off to you. I promise I'll stop. No, you won't. You never do. Because I can't stop. That's my number nine dropping from number seven. <laughs> Sid Saxon, press your like dice game. This is actually, I think, your favorite Sid Saxon game? Uh, on this list, yeah, but I no. think Bizarre would actually drop it. Let me see. You think Bizarre might drop it? Yeah. Um, Sid Saxon's can't stop. Play it on the stop sign. Uh, I know that there's versions of it where it's like on a mountaintop. Uh, but yeah, this is a crossover for us. It's brilliant. Roll four dice, put them into two pairs of whatever combinations you want. Move either introduce runners or move them up if you already have them on that number. As long as you can keep doing that, you can keep rolling and keep pressing your luck. Of course, the numbers two and 12 are very unlikely to be rolled. Yeah. But seven, six, and eight, those are the most common, but those also have the longest tracks. Yep. First one to get three points at the top wins. But if you stop and you don't lose out, then you save your progress for that. Yeah. So one of the one of the things that you can do in this and this, so 
it, you have an argument against like Loop and Louie, right? Mm-hmm. And I want to actually pick your brain on this, and this is a genuine question. So Loop and Louie, your your argument no, that you don't like you. it. No, no, wait, hear me out. No, I'm the reason you. you you say you don't like it, right, is because you someone could play so effectively that it would take somebody out. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, in this game, I mean, I've never seen it, but I know it's possible somebody could win on their first turn. Yeah, it's possible, but I mean, the odds of that happening on uh, are right. astronomical in right. a sense. And I'm, I'm assuming it's just so unlikely that you would be very excited to that see that. That would be interesting to see. Yes, okay, that's what, that was my thought. But with Lupin yeah. Louie, it's it's possible someone yeah. is so good at that game, I'll never take a turn. Right. If someone wins on their first turn, that's just amazing because the odds of that yeah. happening, especially yeah. if they, they, they're rolling ones and uh, 12s, Right. Just to climb those lists and then somehow gets like the four. It, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The twos and twelves is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, twos and twelves. Yeah, see, I that's kind of what I thought too because like that's that's a really hilarious thing to that shoot the moon must, right off the bat. Yeah, that person's got to win the freaking or play the lottery if they're that lucky because <laughs> it's that, right. the odds of him. Because I think what the twos and twelves are what three spaces each or something like that. Yes. Yeah, so only three of they them. have to roll uh, that at minimum uh, six times. Yeah. Just and to get up each there. Each of those are one in 36 odds. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And they're going to do that uh, the, for those four dice. They they need to do it practically at the same time. Yes. And then they still have to push their lock for one of the other yes. close ones. So, uh-huh. yeah, the astronomical odds on that. And now, that'd be cool to see. Yeah. Whereas exactly. they're really just sitting thought. there like. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, I, I'm of the same mindset. I normally, when I play this game, I tend to shoot for at least one point by the first turn. And I'm like, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's fine. But yeah. I normally try to push at least one runner up to the top and I'll stop, you know. Yeah. And then the rest I can just go off of. But if I can get one point right <laughs> off the bat, that makes everyone really nervous all of a sudden. <laughs> it's hilarious. But can't stop. I mean, everything you said about it again... I feel like I'm just repeating a lot of your lines, <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's amazing. That's my number nine. Moving on to our number eight. Number yeah, eight. The faster we get this done, the faster I can kick you out. All right, that's right. I'll be starting us off. Number eight is actually climbed from number ten. This is my favorite abstract strategy game. Um, I've already said Corridor. This is the other one. Quattro? Or? Quarto. Quarto. Yeah. So the way this works, you have 16 wooden pieces. Each one either... They have attributes that are uh, binary. So, like, if half of them are tall, half of them are short. Half of them are square, half are circle. Half are light, half are dark, and half um, have a hole. Um, and half of them are solid. All you have to do is get any one of those eight attributes uh, worth of pieces in a row. So, if I get all four in a row that are short, all four that have a hole, mm-hmm. all four that are square, whatever. Whatever it being, that it is. But there is one big twist that makes this game amazing. And that one twist is that the person who places down the piece that that gets that in a row wins. But the opponent picks what piece you place. Mm-hmm. So the, the way this works is quite simple. If Daniel's going to win, he has to put me in a position where I hand him a winning piece. That is how you have to do it. Not something that I can hand him a piece and he could go, oh, okay, well... Maybe if I put it here, then I might win next turn. Then I'm definitely not going to give him the winning piece. But he has to create that scenario where it's where mm-hmm. I do not have the option but to give him that piece after placing mine. Mm-hmm. That puts you in such a cool headspace that ascends it to beyond almost any other abstract strategy game. A lot of them are just like move pieces in a specific way to help you out. Some of them are like, okay, strategically position your pieces. No, this is break down the possibilities and force them into that. That's like trying to play chess and saying, no, the only way you can win chess is if I put you in a move where you must move into checkmate. Like, that is... Because you can't. That's one of the rules in chess is you can't move yourself into checkmate. Imagine if you had to. Yeah. And that was the twist, and I choose what piece you move. That's what sets it apart. Uh, my yeah, my number eight is this from right, number ten. So my number Quarto. eight is a new game to my list. It's my favorite train game. Ooh, but it's not a train game. It just has a train in it. 
Uh, it is a campaign game. Uh, I mentioned it slightly. Or- oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, okay. I get it. Because <laughs> most, most games that have trains in it, I have a whole train playlist. Yeah, and you've heard that where yeah. like Ticket to Ride and Locomotive Breath and yeah. the Locomotion. This I wouldn't do it for because there was a much better playlist that would this, work yeah. for this. Yes. This one is basically a ghost train. Um, and you're working as characters to give uh, ghosts their humanity back. And you're on this train going westbound, which is a pseudonym for death. I can't believe this is so high on your list. I love, this, uh, I love this game. Well, I've been playing through the campaign. I think yeah. we're like three or four uh, stories into the campaign. Wow. And it's gotten hard. It's gotten difficult but it's gotten so much fun just the story aspect of it the characters you get attached to who you're playing with you're you're really enjoying the stuff that you're picking up Mm -hmm. uh working as a team Uh, it's pretty much the same game as like you're just trying to give uh uh the ghost of ghost of the week in a sense if you're doing like tv shows and stuff like that their humanity back but the way they go about how you have to do it uh Plus, I've I really, really become to a fan of acrylic stuff. I yes. I love the the acrylic minis, though I hate taking the freaking uh, the pieces, the little protectors that they are on there. That you have to take them off. That was a pain in the butt. I just had to do it again with the Stefan Feld collection. Yes. So I left uh, them on. I took them off. Yeah, they don't bother me. At, they just well, some of them were like were all crinkly, so oh, I couldn't. Yeah. 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 No. So I was like, okay, I had to pull these off, I had to pull these off. And you can't just leave some off. Yeah, no, once they start pulling, you gotta go. Yeah. But, yeah, no, (laughs) I really do enjoy the artwork of this game. I love, like, those old school 20 cartoons in real life, uh, just because those are some of the creepiest cartoons. Because I I remember growing up, I had a VHS tape of those cartoons, because my dad used to collect all the classic cartoon stuff. And watching those, it was like... These are creepy. These are... Yeah. <laughs> like, there was one uh, where it was, like, around Halloween, where it's like, just a bunch of bones, and so they're, like, throwing a party, and someone's playing the, the xylophone, basically, on their ribs. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do enjoy that kind of stuff. And I'm a very macabre uh, guy. That's why I like a lot of horror stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one fits in that category. We were just talking about, like, how we very much, like... Macabre yeah. and horror theme. And yeah. So, and like stuff. Final Girl and Horrified on this list. This is another one. Uh, it just, it really hits on all cylinders. I know you didn't care too, too much with it. No, but I only played the first scenario. Yeah. I liked some of the stuff they did. It's just, I didn't, the I wasn't s- in love with it. The story is getting so much better. I love the fact that you're putting tokens in a bag and some of the story tokens are in there. When you pull that, you have to read a whole new story thing. Yep. I like how the hate could be like, easy-ish, but then something happens and it flips to its other side and things yeah. become more difficult. Uh, yeah, no, I love everything about this game. Vagrant cool. Song. Number seven? Number seven. All right, my number seven is... No, no, that was number, my number eight. We got to flip the oh, number seven. You start at uh, eight. Hold on now. All right, that sounds good. What was number eight? Because I brought it. Okay. Now I'm starting number seven. All right, I apologize, sir. My number seven dropped from number six. So it only moved a spot. Um, it's a, it's probably. Let me see here real quick. It is my favorite worker placement game still to this day. Oh wow! And my second highest Stone Meyer game. Oh. Uh, this one is about making wine. This is viticulture. I still really adore this game. Second highest. Yeah, there's another one that's higher. You should not be surprised at all because <laughs> it was the same time last time. So. But yeah, Viticulture, I still really, really enjoy it. I have the the wine crate. It's really at the top. It's like the giant box. I have pretty much everything I can have for Viticulture, except for one of the little small card uh, pack expansions. I got one of them. I need the other one. I think the Moors is the one I have. I need the Rhine Island or or Visitors from the Rhine or something like that. But I enjoy this game. I have a great blast. I highly recommend playing this game just out of the base box for you to, like the Essential Edition, just with the baseboard. But if you like it, I highly recommend getting the Tuscany Essential Edition just for the four season board. The four season board is the reason why this is ju- or my number one uh, work replacement, one of my highest Stone Meyer, because it's just it's one it's a longer game, yes, but mm-hmm. just because the fact that your workers can do so much, and then you're like, okay, well I do this and this. But I need to make sure I have workers for me to go into the next season. So this way I have stuff to do. Um, I also like the fact that 
the first person to retire at the year can choose the if they want to go first the next round or and they get different rewards. So if you put yourself all the way at the end to be the last person in that round, hey, you get an extra worker, a little worker that everybody else can't have. And yeah. I love the fact that, okay, but no, I want to make sure I go first in a round because I want to go to this place for and get more workers into my board. I also like my favorite thing in this worker placement game, the Grande Worker, where you're not technically closed out of spots. You can't yes. really get rewards, but your Grande Worker just pushes himself in a situation like yeah. if you really, really need to go somewhere. Works as a normal worker or gives you something if you really, like, I need to go sell this wine and I am fourth in a four-player game. Okay, fine. I'm going to use my Grande Worker to go there. So I mm -hmm. saved him all the way over here for I can go sell this wine to get my victory points. I love everything about this game. I think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal game. And it's probably the best wine game I've ever played, too. Cool. I've right. only played one other one, and I didn't like that one, the two-player Devere one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, I mean, it had some cool things. Oh, no, it was yeah, a three-player one. Yeah, it was two to four. Yeah, because I remember playing it because we played it with another person. Right, and that's until we play Vinos eventually. Yeah. When we finally play a Lacerda. <laughs> we finally play One Lacerda. of these years. All right, um, my number seven mm -hmm. is this. Jumped up from number 13. This is the quintessential train game, speaking of. You already know what it is. That's Ticket, Ticket to Ride. To ride. Um, and I think this jumped up because I had recently gotten all the small versions of Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. And I've played those. And it just kind of gives me like that quick little, okay, all right. Because I don't always want to jump out with Ticket to Ride. Because I really think Ticket to Ride works well with like four or five players. I, I think the more players for Ticket to Ride works really well just yes. because you have more of the board opening up. Yep, more of the board. The cards recycle better, you mm -hmm. know. A little bit more to consider. You don't always press your luck with the with the tickets and as much, you know. Yeah. But overall, Ticket to Ride, it's a classic. It's one of the best, one of the best spell or best selling games. Spiel de Jaris winner. Yeah. Amongst many Yeah. I don't have much to say about it. Uh, if you don't know what Ticket to Ride is, I don't know how you found this channel. Is base still honestly. your favorite? Huh? Base your still favorite? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Although, like I said, the minis are really, really climbing. Like, I really enjoyed the mm -hmm. the first mini, which is uh, New York. New York, I really enjoyed that one. I yeah. mean, we played that game, uh, two-player, we played it 15 minutes. Both of us were No, different. it wasn't 15 minutes. It was less than 10. <laughs> no, yeah. We were like, wow. <laughs> that was quick. It said 15 like, minutes on the box. We hit it like Boom, eight. boom, boom. We was like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah, it's like, wait, <laughs> we're done? I won? What the heck happened? Like, was there a printing error? Like, why? how, what? Like, ooh, that was good. Yeah, no, yeah. but uh, for me, uh, Europe would be my favorite. Um, yeah. I, I prefer the map of America yeah. just because I know the geography better. Okay, where is this contract going? Again? I'm glad it's not like taking a ride to Iceland. It's like, where's that <laughs> New York? <laughs> it's like, what? Well, That's no, because uh, you have, like, uh, stuff going up to Norway and Denmark, so you're still kind of... Yeah, the Nordic ones. Those yeah. are a little a little shaky. But, uh, but I, because I like the, um, the uh, what are they called, the... Toll, not the toll, the... Um, the stations. Stations, yeah. yeah. I, I love... I That little simple twist really shocked Europe to me, yep. for me. Because it's like, oh, you want to cut me off? No, you won't. <laughs> no, I'm going to use your trains to go that That's way. That's right. I'll show you. Ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, but see, I, I love the being able to cut people off. I love that restriction. Well, but then, then again, yeah, it's fine, the restriction, but it's yeah. also... It's your if you use your train station, you're losing points yes. because they're what five points each if you keep all three. So, no, I think isn't it that you that they are you lose points if you don't use them? No, you gain points if you still have your stations. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. You lose points basically. Like if I put it out there, then that's less points I'm going to get at the end of the game because if you have all three of your station, I think it's like fifteen points. Gotcha. That makes it's like all five points per station. Awesome. That was my number seven. All right, moving on to our number six. Here we go. Starting with me, my number six is the highest uh, Ulos game. Uh, we've already had, this is the third one in this series. Ulos. Uh, the, the newest game coming out is Dawn of Ulos. This is part of Ulos. Oh, okay. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Which one is this? Um, it's not Lockout, is it? Nope. Oh, um... I think lockup was like a couple of sessions Ooh. ago. It's not role players or adventures. Nope. Oh, um, cartographers. Yep. My, uh, yeah. Cartographers was number thirteen last time. 
is number six now, and it's just because all the map packs I've gotten, I love. Yep. We, we, in fact, I just recently played this last week with uh, the Frozen Expanse map pack, which was oh my god, it was so much fun. I, my friend actually requested to play this because one of the heroes that you can add to the deck yep. is a penguin. <laughs> so because you That's have funny. the the penguin folk in this one or in the Ulos uh, series, and yeah. it was, it's so fun. I've played almost every map pack. The only one I haven't played is the. The Plains of Afril in the um, Hornhelm, which is okay. like the market stuff. Oh, no, and Kethra Step. So I'm missing three of the expansions I haven't played, but I'm really getting through it. It, it. It's fun. It's really easy. It's a flip and write game. You're just putting polynomials. You're trying to match the scorecards um, to get your points. person with the most points at the end of the game wins. But it's also one of those things, like after we play, like uh, beforehand, we played Raiders of Scythia. And so that's a very heady game, even though that's like one of the lightest Shim Phillip games. But it's it's a bit heady worker placement. Yeah. So it's like, okay, my brain hurts. Let's just play cartographers. And so like for that's what they were saying. I'm like, yeah, sure, we'll play that one. That's fine. Uh, but I really enjoy this one a lot. My Check number six, coin. cartographers. Did you lose my coin? Probably. Dang. Uh, I'll see myself up. All right, number. Just get the other coin. All right, number six. <laughs> okay. Was no, you, 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 you got to do your number six. Is this not our number sixes? Yeah, we're doing our sixes now. Uh, number six was my number eight. Condo two spots. My favorite Phil Walker Harding game. Gizmos? Nope. Well, your favorite Phil Walker Harding game. It was then. It still is. Emotep? Nope. Oh man. I rant about how much I like the math in this game. Well, that really narrows it down. <laughs> Fair enough. Polyominoes. Baron Park? Yes. Okay. Baron Park. Actually, Baron Park actually dropped out of my top 100. Mm -hmm. It was 28. It's now 113. Oof. That hurts. Yeah. No, Baron Park, absolutely fantastic game. Super good. Um, the way it works is very simple. All you do on your turn is place one of your pieces down. If it happens to color cover a symbol, you get a tile that happens to be in that sector matching the symbol. So if you cover up a wheelbarrow, you get one of the basic tiles. If you cover up a cement truck, you get one of the super fancy ones, or no, the, the, the good ones that are in decreasing points. And if you cover up a backhoe, a big one, then you get to get one of the weird five space uh, pentominoes. And those are each worth anywhere from eight, nine, or ten points. Mm-hmm. I think. I mean, it might be six, seven, eight, nine, something like that. But based on how difficult they are, that's how many points they're worth. You get one of those, and then you build it onto your map, thus causing a puzzle. First one to fill in a square of their map, all 15 spaces, excluding the construction site. You get to build a bear token, which those also decrease in value as people mm -hmm. start taking those. Just like the, the medium-sized tiles. And then finally... Uh, you're just trying to build a board. If you build a construction zone, you get another tile of board. Once you get four tiles on the board, that's it. Yeah. That's the whole game, excluding the expansion uh, I haven't and the excluding expansion the little variant. I, I own the expansion. I haven't played it yet. It looks fine, but, I mean, the base game is just already this good without the expansion. Yeah. I just haven't had that reason where I'm like, oh, will it make it better? I don't know, but I like it a lot. Uh, I do like um, like this game a lot. I... I... Summer Camp is my favorite Phil Walker Harding game. Uh -huh. In fact, I still think Baron Park is the one I don't own. It is the only one. Yeah, I, I still don't much. really own that one. What's funny is I actually took that other Phil Walker Harding game, just a quick note, uh, play a couple weeks ago to our friend's mm -hmm. house. The Yummy Yummy Princess World. Or oh, yeah. Party at Pri Palace Picnic or Pretty Picnic or something Yeah, like whatever. Yeah. Yummy Yummy World, I think. It stressed my friend out so much. It was... How can you be stressed when you have Frankie, the hot oh, dog? and The reason being is because we're taking stuff and she still hasn't taken stuff. And she's like, I feel like I was forced to take crap just to say I took something. <laughs> and I was like, I get it. Like, she was just stressed. I enjoyed the mess out of the game. Yeah. I, Playing it at four players was really fun. Yeah. But yeah, like the all three rounds, she was just super stressed out. My wife was stressed out about it too because she's just like, oh my God. I'm like, I can't okay. imagine people looking at like adorable foods and just being, ah, oh, <laughs> <rage." laughs> 
Because, uh, like, I'll take something. Like, someone flips it up. I'm like, ooh, I'll take that. Uh, whoop, yep. And they're like, oh, God, oh, God, where's my points? And I'm just sitting there like, I, I got, like, five points here with these three cards. I took a, this because I wanted the pickle for I could try to grab something I need. Oh, the pickle. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about the pickle. Yeah, yeah no, Baron Park, it doesn't have, like, the same silliness as the as that one, but it's, it's a lot more strategic. It's so solid. Yeah. What I, what I really like about Baron Park, what it does is, like, when you're talking about getting the extra tiles... You don't have to make it a four or a two by two grid. You could put it like in a straight line. You could do three in a line and one above. Yep. However, because you you're making your own tetromino yeah. with with the tiles. Yeah, you could do whatever you want with that uh, tetromino. Um, I've seen someone do it where it's like that that T piece. So uh-huh. It's always like one, two, three, and then one above. Yep. And win the game. So it's just like however you think you can space these things for mm-hmm. yourself. And I that, I love that. I love the, the choices you can get from it. Yep, absolutely. That's my number six. Baron Park. Moving to our number five. Number five. All right. Starting with me, my number five is a game that moved up. It was originally 22 and is now number five. And I think it's probably because I've played it a little bit more. I've actually played with some of the expansions. Um, I really love two of the expansions. Yep. Um, I haven't played with all. Uh, it is one of the older games, honestly, from like my top ten, because uh, it's been around for a few years now. To the point we still bring up the fact that we took this long game and made it faster to destroy yeah, I know AP. Exactly what it is now. Yes. And what is it? Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. I know other you people... You can't AP this game around <laughs> us. We will let you. I like how both of us, when we played this game, we weren't knowing what the other person was doing, but we did, were doing the same thing. But you were working, I think it was on the, the forest track, and or the oh, oxygen track, know. and I was working on the ocean... No, you were ocean track. I was on no. the oxygen track. And we were just sitting there, because we had one friend that just has really bad AP because they try to min-max everything. Mm-hmm. And then to the point, he just started to <laughs> scramble because what we were doing was triggering the end game. And our other friend that was doing is like, oh, I see what you guys are doing, so let me <laughs> start putting my stuff out there that I yep. need to do. And, and he so, was caught up, too. Yeah, yeah, and he was starting to push his stuff. And it's just, I love it. I love the, the every card is different. I love everything about this game um, from getting the different corporations. And I like the fact that it could be like, if they're new players going against people who are seasoned terraforming Mars, then the new players get to play with their the, the basic industries where it's just simple for them. They get their money, they get their cards. Uh, whereas the new players, they have to play with the, like, the advanced industries. You get your reward and stuff like that, but you have to pay for your cards to keep. And it just it gives them the the new players a chance to compete with people who know how to play. And I I don't see that a lot in games. No. Where it's like, if you're gonna go up against an experienced player, they're gonna kick your butt. And yes. more than likely than not, you're probably still gonna get your ki- butt kicked in terraforming Mars. But it still gives you a chance. Where it's like, okay, right. here's what you're doing. Um, that's all you have to concentrate. You get to keep your cards too and put them out there however you want. Whereas we, we're playing with limited resources because we know how to play this game properly. And I think that's a smart choice, yes. and more games need to do that. It, it's kind of a catch-up mechanic before you even play the game. Yeah. Um, but, but mentioning I played the, a few of the expansions. I played the I played three, actually. I love the board expansions where you have like the, mm-hmm. the other side, so it gives you a different map. I played Venus Next, which is eh. But I love Prelude because it just gives you more resources to start with. Um, oh, that's cool. Uh, and I, I, I enjoy the mess out of this game. And the reason that's why it's climbed, even though I haven't played too much more of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can see it. Uh, I, and I think the reason why I fell in love with it more is because I played Ares Expedition. And though that is a good game, and it's a quicker game, yes. it just doesn't give me the enjoyment that I have of the base game. Because I just love how the base game actually works. Cool. Very good choice. My number five climbed up, and I do honestly believe this was just a fluke. It was number 171 last time. Wasn't even on my list. <laughs> but it is now. Because I remember last time I ranked 285 games, and I think I just this was a fluke. It's just probably, it probably yeah. one of the things that just got missed. Yeah, exactly. Space Base. Yeah, Space Base actually fell Johnny out of Clay. my... Johnny Yeah. Space Base fell out of my top 100. It was 32 last time. It is... A hundred and four. Wow. Okay. And it's just, just I, barely. Wow. Yeah, I just it's because I haven't played it. Now, and you know what? The thing is, you got to try some expansions too. <laughs> oh, I want to try some the, expansions, but I 
I can't justify buying like the campaign stuff because I don't get it to the table that much. Like I take it to my other game night, right? And uh, I like give them a choice. Hey, what do you want to play? And it's usually just, eh, I'm not feeling that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, I I don't blame you on that. But every time I have played it, now that I have my wife and my son now plays mm-hmm. it, and he is he's pretty ferocious um, in in this game. We've been playing the campaign through the expansion, and now we don't play without the expansions in it. Mm-hmm. Um, now, especially while we're playing the campaign, we're, n- we're not going to take out the expansions. Yeah. But once we finish with that, I'm just going to have all the expansion stuff on the side because it's fully just playable as modules that you can add yeah. in. It's less of a campaign and more of a, like, have you, hey, we're just going to individually add in the, the modules. One? Well, yes, we are working on the, on nice. the newest one. Yeah. We've played the entirety of the first, um, and I'm not including the command station, although I probably will buy that eventually. Um, I am talking simply, we played Shy Pluto, the emergency of Shy Pluto, and right now it's Terra Proxima, mm-hmm. and I we are currently playing through that. Yes, and it's awesome. But maybe that's one of the reasons it climbed so much, or maybe it was just because I messed up the ordering last time. And, and also, it's possible that because you're playing with your family, it's giving you yeah. more of a right. Exactly. This is more or less a Machi Koro killer for our, for yeah. our family. And Honestly, really it was, like it was a Koro. it was a Machi Koro killer for me. I yeah. I, I, li- I like certain things about Machi Koro, but uh, it just for me sometimes Machi Koro stayed longer than it should yes. have. And uh, only unless you have certain cards in your thing, you're mm-hmm. not really paying attention to other people's roles. But in right. this one, you're always paying attention to what people roll. That's right. That, but that's my number five. On to our number four. Yep. And what's funny here is that this is going to be my last two. There's one more bef- after this. New games to this list. Okay. This one is <laughs> basically the terraforming Mars killer for me. Even though I it just okay. said terraforming Mars is there, a lot of people compare this to terraforming yes. Mars. It's I relatively it new. Yep. I enjoy everything about it. The only gripe I have about it, and people talk about it too, is the crossing pass thing, where the the trigger of the end game, someone has to cross both scoring tracks, and that can lead you one person if they're not playing efficiently to have negative thirty six points. <laughs> well, that's their fault, not mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, I'm just saying that. Wasn't I the one who triggered the end on that? When yeah. We played that? Yeah. So, uh, so this was it one, you that had the negative 36? No, it was our friend. It was our friend, Game, Game Head, Head Geek. Geek. Yeah. I had negative 27. <laughs> really, you both had zero. It's fine. Yeah. I, we were just messing with each other. But I enjoy this one. It's Arc Nova. A relatively new game yeah. uh, out there. And I just love everything about it. And the reason why I say it's a terraforming Mars killer, and it's not just because... it. It's an engine builder that kind of does the similar stuff. There's different cards and stuff like that. Why it's a killer for me is I like animals more than I like the Mars. Uh, it is. I want to upgrade this. I want to get like little uh, the little plastic animals. This way you could just put them on your board while you're building your zoo. Yeah. Uh, I enjoy this game. I I am gonna get the expansion which adds aquariums. Uh, I did have the mini expansion where it gives you different maps uh, for the game. Uh, there's just I also really really love the the action selection, I mm-hmm. guess you can call it the way it works. It's where you can pick one action. Once you do it, it has to slide all the way to the bottom and all the other cards moved yes. up. So Brilliant have, system. Uh, that, to the point where you have to decide, well, if I do this now, that makes this more powerful, which is the move I really want to do, but it's at a three. I need it to be a little higher, maybe a four, mm-hmm. maybe a five. But if I do this, I can get all these resources, which will help me do this later. And then you're sitting there, like, once you get that, then there's like, okay, well, I have this all set up now. Which one do I need to upgrade before mm-hmm. I could do better at certain things? And, oh, my God, the choices in this one. It's a brain burner. Um, it's it's so much fun. I understand. I, I agree with why it's jumping up in, in, on the BGG Top 100, mm-hmm. why it's jumping up in people's uh, Top 10, Top 100 games. And stuff yep. like, it jumped in mine because it just it does a lot of smart things. I enjoy the mess out of this game, uh, but the only thing is... Just like Terraforming Mars, just like uh, uh, Through the Ages, expect to be playing a longer game. Because uh, I took this to a game night with my wife and our mutual friends that I mentioned earlier. And I told them, if this is what we're going to play, uh, if we play it right now, we can maybe get a couple more games before we get to come home and feed the dogs. Maybe. And they all wanted to try it because they like cutesy little animals. And they enjoyed it. And it, right, it took us almost four hours to play it. I was teaching three new players. Right. But, no, I love this game, Arc Nova. Cool. All right, this is now our number... Your number four. My number four. My number four dropped from number three. Yeah, it's not that bad. This is my favorite Stefan Feld. Castles of Burgundy. Burgundy. Yeah. I mean, it 
dropped from number four or number three to number four. That's only because a couple others wiggled their way in there, mm-hmm. a little bit above it. Very few. Honestly, but, we're going to start to uh, try some new ones tomorrow, too. So let's we'll yes, see what happens exactly. there. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, that, which I personally like that idea of how we're doing <laughs> it. Um, and again, I also kind of my pick. I don't care. Because that's awesome. But Castles of Burgundy, absolutely the reason why I started looking at Stefan Feld as a designer. Mm-hmm. Anything else that he made after that point, I was like, I want to know about it. Yeah. Because there's something just terribly brilliant about how it works. You take one of four actions, you roll two dice, you get two actions on your turn um, based on the numbers. Mm-hmm. You can either buy a tile based on the number of what which area it is on the board. You can either place a tile, assuming the number matches mm-hmm. the region that it is and the color of the tile. Or you can take some workers, or you can uh, sell goods. So, yeah, I was gonna say, or yeah. No, you could s- sell a ship too, or uh, do the shipping action, but I, that's the... Well, yeah, selling goods. Yeah. Yeah. So any of those four things. It sounds simple. But every tile works in its own weird, unique way, which was akin to how Stefan Feld works. Mm-hmm. Like the blue tiles, those build uh, your shipping. It also gets you shipping goods that you can sail on later on. It also determines turn order. The green tiles have different types of animals. You're going to score points for all your animals. Um, the tan tiles, those have... Um, what are the tan tiles? Those are just different buildings that give you the abilities. Uh, the yellow tiles, all unique sciences and, and and other abilities that you're able to play sometimes will be scoring. Uh, the gray tiles let you get mm-hmm. silverlings, which will let you buy bonus tiles. Yep. The green, the castle of Burgundy, the, but the dark green one, just straight up gives you an extra action <coughs> for now free. That, now that you mentioned that, I, I was going to tell you about this. Uh, Awaken Realms, you know how they're doing the upgraded yes. version of it? Mm-hmm. They changed the, uh, the castle of Burgundy's color. It's no longer green, dark green. Is it burgundy finally? Yeah. And there was a reason why they did that. To match because, the title. Well, no. That's actually not why. But they just they made the most sense for them. Because the, what other tiles are... There's no other red tile, right? Yeah. They didn't want three different shades of green tiles. Because yep. uh, the, one of the new expansions that they're putting in there, the vineyards are also green tiles. I'm like, that is smart. Why? Alea, yeah. come on. Alea, come on. <laughs> Modelia, you should know better. You should know better. Yeah, but no, it Castles of Burgundy, it's just so phenomenal. It's one of, it is probably the heaviest game. In fact, I already know it's the heaviest game on the, right now. That's in my top four. Hmm. Is my heaviest game. It was my, Castles of Burgundy. Uh, I talked about it on the last one. It was my number 32 dropped out of my top 10. That is another crossover. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we're at 20 now. 20 crossovers. One-fifth of our list. Well, I don't think... I know there's one more crossover per, or for sure. The other two on this list, I don't know if you mentioned one of them or not. We'll find out. No, right. you have not mentioned it because you don't own it. Oh, that would explain it. Yep. Number three. To you? I'll start it off. My number three is a Spiel des Jahres winner. And what else is new? Surprise. I mean, Ticket um, to Ride is a Spiel des Jahres winner. It was yes. in the top ten. Uh-huh. Yes, it is. Most Spiel des Jahres winners have a chance of being in my top <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God, what um, is this one, though? Uh, but this one created a series of games that we all generally like, except for one of them. Oh, this is Azul? Yes. Azul, base, my number three. I love Azul. When it I thought you had already out, mentioned Azul, but it's Summer Pavilion. You I did mention Summer Pavilion. That's <laughs> why I had to make that distinction between the two, because they're like, okay... I have both, I have, I may or may not have another Azul on my list. No, I mean, I obviously have base Azul. This is, this has one of the few things that almost no board game has ever done before. And that is, my wife has played this twice in one game day. I don't think there's a single other game that I own where she played it and was willing to play it again. So, in the same my wife game day. played this twice in the same game day and she hated it. Yeah, and that's a shame, because I absolutely love Azul. Because we played it the first time with the the printed things where it tells you where all yes. those pieces go. Mm-hmm. And then we played it with the other side. It's so like, okay, maybe this will be better for you. This way you can make more choices. She's like, it's the same pattern. Why don't you figure out how you're going to do it? Yeah, it is. Mathematically, it's the same thing. And she's like, it just doesn't, yeah. No, she wasn't. I was like, oh. 
Because yeah. I wanted to pick up a copy, but she won't play it, so I'm like, nope, I'm good. Yeah, and you have all, all your other game groups all have as well. Uh, yeah. ex- except for, well, no, you guys have it. The, the other game group doesn't have it, because I'm the game guy for that. Yeah, and that's a shame, because I think that other group would like it. They probably would, but I'm not going to force my wife to play something that she would like. Well, if you need to borrow it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. If for some reason your wife's not there, I guess. Well, I did play a giant version of this I really liked. Ooh, I would love to play the giant version. I played it at uh, Dice Tower West in 2019. It was it was fun. Yeah, that that sounds like, awesome. I honestly, it. I, it was three hundred dollars to buy, and yeah. I actually considered it, like strongly, strongly. I considered, considered it, it, but at, at that time I was like bulking at something like a yes. hundred dollar game. Now it's like meh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, I I love as well. I'm so happy I own it. I would have owned it anyway. Cause it's a spiel winner. Mm-hmm. But the fact that this is number three of my all time favorites really goes to show how much I like spiel winners, and that's. Yeah, it's well, true for the vast majority of them. You have, what, two so far on the top ten? Yes. Because Ticket to Ride... The Ticket to Ride was on ten, so I have two so far. Yeah, that's what I can think of. Uh, so my number three is not a Spiel de Jars winner. But we both really, really enjoy this game. You just don't own this game. Um, you do have access to a copy of it that you could take and show to your family. Not mine, per se. But uh, you could borrow it. It's fine. Uh, it is a phenomenal game and it is a restored game and it's oh, also yeah, new, okay. new to the list this is the return to dark tower uh i i love and adore this game it is so much fun i like the this one for the fact that it's not a campaign that you could just plug and play how you want to play you can make it easier for yourself you can make it more difficult for yourself depending mm-hmm. on the scenarios so, like, I know some people talk about it online, what they do, and I, I tend to do it a couple times when I'm teaching new people, is that you make the monsters at least share at least one thing. Yep. So, like, if one monster is a magic beast, then you want, like, the second tier monster maybe have beast or magic in it. Yeah. And the third tier monster kind of do the same thing. And you honestly kind of want to do it with the big bad of your choice. This way everything just, it's a little bit, it, it's not easy per se. Yeah. It just makes things easier. Uh, for people, because a little uh, more manageable. Because the first time we played yeah. it, all the creatures were different, <laughs> and it wrecked us. We, yes, we, it I think we ended up no, we we lost. Yes. I think we ran out of skulls or something like that. Mm-hmm. But the the Bluetooth tower, the everything about this game is amazing. The only thing I don't have for this uh, uh, series is the playmat. Yep. Uh, but I do enjoy it a lot. Uh, I've talked about it quite a bit since we started playing it. Uh, so I'm not going to do too much about it, but yeah, my number three, Return to Dark Tower. The only reason it's not on my list is because I don't own it yet. Yeah. 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 Yet. Yeah. I will buy it one of these. <laughs> in fact, I'm waiting for my most recent Kickstarter for the expansion that's coming out. Yeah. By the way, my Azul was like number 11, I think. So it jumped up. What, Azul? Yeah. Oh, okay. Base Azul. Okay. Yeah. All right. Number two. Number twos. My number two <sighs> is the last non-Spiel de Jahres winner on my list. Non? Non Spiel de Jars winner on my list. This is the highest. I know what your non. number one is, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that confirms it, right? No, yeah. this is just a card game. Just a card game, huh? Yep. Just a card game. You should know what this is. It jumped up from number four from last year. I love this card game. Every time I play it, I can't wait to play it again. I have requests numerous times to play it. Every person I've played it with, there's only been a single person who has ever, like, like eh, it's okay. But. I don't care what they say because they were giggling the whole time and absolutely like almost in tears laughing. And then I think they were just trying to save face by going, eh, it's, you know, it's just a card game. Like, so how good can it be, right? No, this is a card game about shrewd negotiation. Oh, come on, you know this. Shrewd it negotiation? Ha- shrewd negotiation. Amazing card game. Uh, the only one I could think of is Pit, but it's not Pit. No, it's, it's not Pit. Pit. It's not real time. No, but this yeah. plays up to seven players. Three to seven players. This is from, I want to say, like, 1997. Coup? It is not Coup. <laughs> Heinz, welcome. Thank you for joining us. No, this um, it has about, like, 100-something card, cards. Maybe about 150 cards. I'm drawing a blank. It like... just recently hit its 25th anniversary, and so much that it came out with a special limited oh, edition. Oh, but 25th. Bright yellow box, Bonanza, <laughs> the bean farming. <laughs> oh my god, Bonanza. Wow, you're number two. It is my number two, and I very much, when it finally came up on my compare list, up against this and my number one, I was like, do I? 
<laughs> and I had to honestly think if I had both of those games in front of me right now, right now. Which one you would play? Which one I would play. And just barely my number one irked it out. But I knew that was going to be a very tough choice. And I know every time I play this, this just gets better and better. It doesn't... It it, it gets better. Like, every mm-hmm. time. So the way Bonanza works is quite simple. You have a hand of cards which you cannot change the order of. At the beginning of your turn, you must play the first card in your hand. By the first, I mean the one closest to you. Yeah. Heinz, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's it's brilliant. I yeah. didn't get it, and I played it until he said, like, 25th anniversary. Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah, cause, and it's because you saw the limited box. Yeah. I think you bought it, right? Didn't yeah, you? I have it. Yeah, Actually, I think I have the game and the card over there, but I still have my box over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the box is totally worth it. If you get a chance to buy it, buy it. Um, especially from Zia Comics. Anyway, um, shameless promotion. The game works simple. You have to play the closest card to you. You know what? I don't think And you, you may list. play the second one. Now, after you've played those cards, then you deal two cards face up in front of you. You can just straight up take those and plant them into your bean farms. Or, if somebody else wants it, which is more likely, they can offer you deals for it. Or they don't have to. You could either give them away as charity if someone's willing to accept them. Or they might force you to plant them and replace some beans that you've already been working on. Causing complete shenanigans. The bigger the bean field you have of the same type, the more points it's potentially worth. The fewer the bean there are in the deck, mm. the more points and the easier the points are to get, but the harder because the rarer they are to come up and the more you have to press your luck to get them. Honestly, this didn't make my list. Is And you just forgot? No, it's because I don't think I've ever tagged uh, my 25th edition as owned copy. Ah. So I haven't tagged it on my played games or my... Uh, oh, that's a shame. So it didn't come up. Do you think it would have hit your 100? It might have, if not, been close. Yeah. This is my favorite Uwe Rosenberg game, I'll tell you that. Oh, much. yeah. Yeah, and we like quite a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, Feast for Odin and stuff like that, but yeah. I don't know why. There's just something about this game. Yeah, there's something about it. It, it absol- No, this might be like... Th- this is up there with another Uwe Rosenberg game of yours that you like that looks like Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> I, I do like Bargain uh, Hunter. But... Bargain Hunter was great. But yeah, th- this one hits on all cylinders. My number two... Bonanza. In fact, I'm thinking about taking with the, this one for, with me for our trip. Cause we're oh, absolutely. To play. I'm taking like little card games. That's why, and one of the reasons why I wanted to pick up Little Devils, too. This would be a great one. Well, this would get it like back from a friend. Easy. Yeah, well, I'm only going to take like two or three of those containers. Mm-hmm. Because That's I don't want to pack up our suitcase. Right. If you just get like a, like a long box mm-hmm. and just put like card games in it and just put the cards. Yeah. That'd yeah be it's just easier because at least the shell Pretty protects easy. all the stuff. Yeah, That's true. So, my number two um, moved up from number three, so it actually moved up a spot. And I think it's a big part of it is because of all the expansions for it. I have a massive box for it now. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is probably my most blinged out game I own, and that's saying, well, okay, my number one is probably more blinged out now, too. But also, I I have uh, 3D printed pieces. I have the board game uh, geek bits for this game. I play... This game's. In fact, I just played it last week or last Saturday. It's and it's there is a reason why it's number two. I really do enjoy the mess out of this game. It's a Stonemeyer game. You already know what it is, so tell yep, people. I already looked up at it. It is Wingspan. I enjoy Wingspan. Um, it's a nice little engine build. I'm already. I I love bird watching. I have a bird feeder in my backyard yep. just so I can watch the birds eat. We haven't filled it up lately just because one, we're going away for a trip, and two. The wind has been scattering the weeds or the the seeds around, and so like in our little rose garden, there's all these little different things growing in there now. So, but yeah, wingspan I adore. Uh, Elizabeth Hardgrave really knocked it out of the park with this game. Uh, Stonemeyer really uh, developed this really well. I know you're not a huge fan of it. There's other mm-hmm. engine builders okay. you would prefer to play, but much yeah, yeah. I love the theme on it. I love the fact that the theme is so different from really for the longest time out there this really started the the yeah. nature theme movement like meadow and all those other games out there but so wingspan yeah uh, i'm not gonna belabor the point i adore this game yep very good and our number one number ones let's, which, let's not even belabor the point both of us know what it is yeah starting with me my number one um is gloomhaven, gloomhaven. Uh, yeah. th- this is probably the most blinged out thing because a buddy of mine has been 3d printing me stuff uh i have 3D prints from you yep. for, like, the player pieces. I got 3D prints from my buddy for the monsters. 
I, I use an app to run the monsters. Yep. I have so much love for this game. I enjoy the mess out of it. There's a reason why it is our first game that ever ascended in the top eight debate. Yes. It is yep. it's so much fun. I have the sequel right there to the fact our friends started playing it, uh, the Jaws of Lion stuff, and they started playing Gloomhaven. They caught up to us, so we just melded our campaigns, and now we're playing it together. Wow. <laughs> so it's like, you've made pretty much all the choices we've made, and this yeah. is actually my most played game of all time. Between this one and Jaws of the Lion, I have almost 60 games played of just this one game. I think it's like at 57 or 58. That's how much I've played this game. And I got the sequel sitting right there waiting for me to get started on it. Waiting for that, us to start on that it. That freaking game practically gave me a hernia. That Oh, one. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's freaking heavy trying to bring it in. But, yeah, no, Gloomhaven, it's it's such a such a smart design. I love the fact that there is still a little luck on it because you're based on draw uh, the, the bonuses from the draw, the the enhancement deck, but your characters could get more powerful, so you can get perks that take cards out and put cards in. I love everything about this game. Um, I've talked about it a lot, so go ahead and talk about your number one that you talk about a lot. But you already know what it is. Yeah. Carcassonne. Carcassonne. Yeah. It, I, st- I debated whether this was going to continue being my number one, because I do play it less and less every time I do it. I already own all expansions for it. Yeah. Um, with the exception of like, the smaller promo stuff, I will get those eventually. But I own the maps for it. I own a lot of the different base sets for it. I like all of them. I even own like the weird religious one. Um, oh, that's right. You know, that. it's Carcassonne's an absolutely smart, brilliant uh, Spiel des Jahres winner. Tile Lang, which I now am starting to realize, I think is my favorite mechanism still. I, I really do like Tile Lang. Yeah, it's and not Polyomino. There. Like Polyomino is okay, but there's something about this Tile Lang. Like and then um, trying to figure out how to like connect a road. Or exactly. Something like that. Yeah. Hexagonal Tile Lang, I like that a lot too. Or Domino Tile Lang, those are all really fun. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. It's just I, I talked about it last time. Every time we debate it, I talk about it. Mm-hmm. I love Carcassonne. It's one of my I first like Carcassonne. I, I just talk. won't play it with him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I made you hate it all of a sudden. Um, I, I do. Uh, what player counts do you play Carcassonne? Ooh, um, I only about three. Uh, I, I normally play. That's three. that's another reason why I I sold it. We played a four player game of it, and I just didn't really enjoy myself. I like then. it before. I actually like it in all player counts. Honestly, like it. I, I haven't played much of the expansions. I played the river ones, and I think mm-hmm. it's that... What is that? Like the Abbeys or something like that? Yeah. Inns and Cathedral. Yeah, that one. Um, Abbeys something. And something. No, it was Inns yeah. and Cathedral is the one we played. Yeah, that has the bigger meat I, I do like that they changed the farmer role. It's now a variant if you want to play with the farmers. Yes. Because that was one of the hardest things for me to explain to people. <laughs> yeah. Was how was, the farmers it was work. surprising. The, with the, how simple the rest of the game is, the farmer is... Yeah, I, I do agree. It's a good game. I just won't play it with you. Though I do want to try the the, the co op version yes, of it. I know you're going to get it, so just oh, play I'm hundred percent. I'm going to see if they have have a copy of Gamma that I could just <laughs> steal, um, blatantly bribe. Yeah, I'm still sad that hostage. I hostage. I don't know. I'm going to find a way because I want to get it. Very um, excited for yeah, and just I mean, I already really like cooperative, and the fact that they take my favorite game and turn it into a cooperative, and from what I've heard. It's really good cooperative. Yeah. And hey, A3, thanks for joining. Yeah, it was tough with newbies for sure. Any interest in Mist? Yes, 100%. I I just recently bought um, the Gold Rush version, and I own Ark of the Covenant, and I own Wheels. Of, I own all the expansions, so I own Wheels of Fortune. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I also own the Hunters and Gatherers. I have the New World. I have... I have one other special version that I'm just forgetting. Do you off have like head. the? No, that's Ticket to Ride. I, I don't like own that. every special version. I was like, because they have like those two dinosaurs, versions. but that's Ticket to Ride. <laughs> oh, no, I own that. The, <laughs> the Dexter and something yeah. expansion. Yes, I own that actually. <laughs> it's it's really dumb, but I mean that was basically the princess and the dragon. Yeah. In Ticket to Ride, I heard that's like is, one of the meanest expansions. The princess. Yeah, and the dragon. Speak, well, now so here's the reason, right? Is when you draw a dragon tile, or when you draw a princess tile, <laughs> the princess covers it. <laughs> you can make it. Does he make can make a co-op good for once? Yeah. Hold on, wait. Is that a jab at something? I want to <laughs> know because they made pandemic. It's probably a jab at. I, that sounds like a jab at pandemic, is what I'm thinking. I don't know. Paleo's a really good. Paleo. Uh, a good is it co-op. Yeah, Zeman. It's right there. Oh, because I knew it was. 
uh, something else. But and now it's both in our top one hundred. <laughs> so paleo. Yeah, no, but uh, oh my goodness, Carcassonne is just—it's it, still like gets me excited. I still play the app every once in a while. I've never played a co-op game I like. No shade on Pandemic. You've never played a co-op game you liked. What about the one you designed? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. No, I mean I'm sure that he's been that, mean he's the done. entire top. No, I up. I've been destroying him. No, okay, really. <laughs> That's probably the one you do like. Uh, try Paleo. If you haven't tried Paleo, Paleo is really smart. Um, but yeah, Dark Zone, number one game, still of all time. We'll see if it continues. It that continues. Way next time. Uh, we'll probably do this probably a couple years. Yeah, I think because uh, we're going into we're going to start our fourth year. So I think after the end of our fifth year is when we'll do it again. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So, so I have some interesting statistics real quick about okay. my top 100. I don't know if you have anything. Prepared. Nope, I don't. I am fine. I, I mentioned that. at the beginning, 44 new games made the list. So okay. basically half my list. Mind you, we've played a lot more games in the last two, three years when we last did the list. Or in the 18 months when we last did this list. We've played a lot. I've done nearly 200 in, the, in each year. So next up, uh, like I said, Pandemic fell from the notable fallouts. Pandemic Legacy went from 11 to 136. Red Rising went from 17 to 114. Oh, wow. Blood Rage went from 40 to 105. Okay. Uh, Mysterium fell from 26 to 172. Baron Park, as I mentioned, 28 yep. to 113. Space Base dropped into to 104. Turns and Taxis just dropped out, went to 145. Uh, again, my top 10 dropouts, Horrified, Just One, Scythe, Harry Potter, Hogwarts Battle, Star Wars Out of Rim, and Castles of Burgundy. Most of those kind of stayed relatively de- uh, decent. Like, Hogwarts Battle went to 34. Scythe, on the other hand, really dropped. It dropped from 7 to 82. Oof. That hurts. Mm-hmm. All right. And we had 21 crossovers. That's right. So I won this battle. I forgot what the prize was. That I don't hit you with the lightsaber? That's a plus. After all the <laughs> crap I've given him in this episode, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, if you ever want to join us on a live episode, you could do so. Like our friends Heinz and F3. Thank you guys for both tu- tuning in. I say guys, but, but thank you both for tuning in. Uh, we want to join in on live chat because it's just one of the funnest ways to interact with people. Sorry, even though I threw shade at like, everyone today, mm-hmm. apparently. Um you can join us at twitch.tv slash everydayboardgames. As well as you can find all video re-uploads found on YouTube at Everyday Board Games 2020. And if you like what we do, there are three things you can do to help us grow on that platform. Subscribe if you're not, like the video, and comment down below and tell us your thoughts on the subject. As well as all audio versions can be found on most podcast platforms under Everyday Board Games Podcast. This includes Spotify, Google, Amazon Music, and Podbean. And one note before we close out... We will not be recording next week. I'm going to be out of town, and you have an anniversary. So. That's right. Kind of need to show up that. So, also, if you want to email us directly, you can email us at everydayboardgames2020 at gmail.com. If you want to give us comments about our list, enter in future contests, or even give us ideas for future episodes. That would be the email that you want to email us at everydayboardgames2020 at gmail.com. So, as always, we want to thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I've been your host, Daniel. And I've been your host, Daniel. And that was our Top 100 Games. Thank you for listening to Everyday Board Games. And remember, every day is a good day for board gaming.